Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. Breaking into the tomb of Elizabeth I. One of the greatest monarchs in history to rule England was Elizabeth I. She, during her reign, saw off the threat from the Spanish Armada and also tried to unite the country in a number of ways. One of her most shocking actions was to order the execution of Mary, Queen of Scots, who many believed was her biggest rival to the throne, as Catholics across England wanted the Scottish monarch to become queen. She faced many plots and was loved by her people. However, in the early hours of the 24th of March 1603, Elizabeth I died. The Elizabethan era was over, and as she did not have an heir, the throne of England passed to James VI of Scotland, who then became James I. But it was he who was responsible for ordering a funeral for Elizabeth, which benefited her status. He also sorted out her tomb and monument, but centuries on her coffin would be open and broken into. But what is the story of this? Elizabeth had become ill over a number of months, and she saw many of her friends die over the last few years of her life. She was 69 when she passed away, and on her deathbed, the Archbishop of Canterbury asked her to think towards God. It was said that her throat swelled, and she then fell into a deep depression, and she was losing the fight for life. She died in her privy chambers at Richmond Palace, and she made strict instructions that she did not want to be disemboweled, but this was not adhered to. Robert Cecil left orders with the surgeons to disembowel her and fill her insides with herbs and spices. The Queen was then embalmed and her body was placed inside of a lead-lined wooden coffin. She lay in state at Richmond for a number of days before she was taken down the Thames to the Palace of Whitehall. Her coffin was draped in velvet and was watched by six ladies, and it was said that when she travelled down river, the oars at every stroke did tears let fall. There are reports at this time that from the coffin there was a loud crack, which could have been Elizabeth's body and head breaking open the coffin. This, it's believed, was from the pressure of gases released from her dead body, and it was said that the force of the explosion splintered the wood and the searcloth. But on the 28th of April, a month after, her body was taken on a grand procession to Westminster Abbey. It was said that the city of Westminster was surcharged with a multitude of all sorts of people in the streets, house, leads and gutters that came to see the obsequies. There was such a general sighing, groaning and weeping, as the like has not been seen or known in memory of man. On top of the coffin was the Queen's effigy, which was dressed in her Parliament robes with her crown on her head and her sceptre in her hand. The coffin was pulled by four horses, and she was then taken into Westminster Abbey for the funeral service. Dean Andrews conducted the funeral, and her coffin was then carried to the Henry VII's Lady Chapel. Initially, to begin with, her body was placed inside of the vault, which was also containing the body of her grandfather and grandmother, Henry VII and Elizabeth of York. But then in 1607, her coffin was moved to be in the same location as her half-sister Mary I, the Protestant Elizabeth was interred alongside her Catholic half-sister. It was said that 46 shillings and 4 pence was paid for the removal of the Queen's body to her new resting place. On top of this, a huge tomb, which cost £1,485, was commissioned and made which showed Elizabeth I on top. The tomb was lifelike, and today it's incredibly grand. Mary lays at rest below Elizabeth, but there is no grand and ornate monument to mark her place in history, only a small stone today states that Mary is actually buried there. But in the 19th century, the tomb of Elizabeth I was broken into. A book in 1880 was published by Arthur Stanley, who had been given permission to survey all the tombs inside of the abbey by Queen Victoria. He went into the crypts and the royal burial vaults, and he wrote detailed descriptions of the tombs and what he saw. These vaults were hidden, and he was trying to find the coffin of King James I, Elizabeth's successor. Stanley explored a narrow aisle underground, in the eastern end of Elizabeth I's monument, and here he found an opening in one of the walls. When he went inside, he saw a narrow vault and two coffins inside, and these were Elizabeth's and Mary's coffins. Arthur Stanley then wrote what he saw, and he went into the vault, 
and he described Elizabeth's coffin. He stated, The excavations, however, had almost laid bare the wall immediately at the eastern end of the monument of Elizabeth, and through a small aperture a view was obtained into a low, narrow vault immediately beneath her tomb. It was instantly evident that it enclosed two coffins and two only, and it could not be doubted that these contained Elizabeth and her sister Mary, the upper one larger and more distinctly shaped in the form of the body, like that of Mary Queen of Scots, rested on the other. There was no disorder or decay, except the centering wood had fallen over the head of Elizabeth's coffin, and that the wood case had crumbled away at the sides and had drawn away part vault of the decaying lid, no coffin plate could be discovered, but fortunately the dim light fell on a fragment of the lid slightly carved. This led to a further search, and the original inscription was discovered. There was the Tudor badge, a full double rose, deeply but simply incised in the outline of the middle of the cover. On each side, the August initials ER, and below, the memorial date, 1603. The coffin lid had been further decorated with narrow moulded panelling. The coffin case was of inch elm, but the ornamental lid containing the inscription and panelling was of fine oak, half an inch thick, laid on the inner elm cover. The whole was covered with red silk velvet, of which much remained attached to the wood, and it had covered not only the sides and ends, but also the ornamented oak cover as though the bare wood had not been thought rich enough without the velvet. The sight of this secluded a narrow tomb, thus compressing in the closest grasp the two Tudor sisters, partners of the same throne and grave, sleeping in the hope of resurrection. The solemn majesty of the great queen thus reposing, as can hardly be doubted by her own desire, on her sister's coffin, was the more impressive form the contrast of its quiet calm with the confused and multidinuous decay of the Stuart vault, and the fullness of its tragic interest with the vacancy of the deserted spaces which had been hereinto explored in other parts of the chapel. The vault was then immediately closed. Today it's unlikely that anyone will ever be allowed into these royal vaults to document and photograph the coffins of the monarchs who lived centuries ago, but Stanley brings forward a brilliant account of the coffin of Elizabeth I, and where she rests today. But he remains one of the only people in history who has been able to see Elizabeth I's coffin, and the Tudor monarch's remains today are still located under the magnificent tomb of her. Thank you for watching, and to support, Please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.